Hey, here's a no effort video about Nabu and answering a few questions that I've been watching. Uh, specifically, hey, shout out to Adrian's Basement for doing a Nabu video, right on. Um, some people are talking a little bit about my history with, uh, with Nabu, so I thought I'd share some of that. So yeah, I am developing a Nabu network adapter simulator right now, so it's a thing that I'm working on. If you wanna message me and help out, that'd be super useful. Um, I went through a bunch of old photos here to find some information about Nabu because um, I wanted to answer a few questions and address a few things that I've been seeing, especially on like this video of uh, what Adrian did. Um, so yeah, my family has a significant history with, with Nabu. So I grew up with it at the tail end when they went bankrupt. Um, this is like, again, this is a no effort video. So I'm not gonna be sitting here talking to you face to face, but I'll show you some videos of some things that uh, I think you might be interested in. Um, anyway, so there were some comments about the six megabit connection. Um, it was not six megabits. It was and it wasn't. So over the coax cable, it would send six megabit in a carousel in a loop of data. And data was a uh, segment and packets that were split up and they were timed so that when a program would load, um, the parts of the, the packet would be split of the set it would be split around. So a program wouldn't be a consecutive bytes on the line, it would be split. So that would give the 111 kilobit um, connection between the network adapter and the uh, Nabu computer some time to be able to transmit that data and then run a CRC check on it and then upload that, uh, that data into, into RAM. So that was carefully, painstakingly arranged <laughs> to allow that to happen. Um, another thing too is the discussion about the MSX. So the hardware on the NABU at the time, it was like you met, like people have mentioned and Adrian mentioned, it, it's popular stuff. It was um, on the Coleco, it was in the MSX. So a lot of people are saying, oh, it's an MX clone. Actually, no, it's not. And I don't recall if there was ever communication between the NABU team when I was younger and, uh, and anyone working on MSX. There was some um, some work NABU in Japan. There was uh, the cable system actually was implemented there for a brief period of time and uh, under a different name. But the this system was released in 1982 and the MSX was released in 1983. So it just, it was coincidental that that was the most popular hardware at the time. So it wasn't a clone of MSX. It wasn't a Canadian copy. <laughs> it wasn't like Canadians were like, hey, we're going to copy what what, uh, what MSX is doing. It was just that it was that happened to be the most popular hardware at the time with the TI chips and the Z80A. Um, the cable modem was not bi-directional. I know that the natural access to bi-directional utilities was uh, the acronym for NABU. However, that wasn't the case because the cable system at the time, Kojiko and um, I can't remember the other ones that, that, it, that it published on, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't bi-directional. It's because the amplifiers at the time could only amplify in one direction, not two. So there was a cable, like a, um, an adapter at one point, I remember we had, it was a, a modem that would upload data to the cable system. And then there was a, a network adapter that we had at, at my uncle John's in, in Ottawa that had a uh, bi-directional capability as well. But it was, I think that there was something crazy about that. I remember the big discussion about it. I think they had to change a bunch of um, amplifiers and, and the whole system to try to, to see if they make it work. So it was really neat that you'd be able to upload data. So their solution to that, because the cable system across Canada wasn't gonna cooperate and change all of their hardware for bi-directional communication, their, um, their response to that was to have an 8K ROM which allowed you to boot off a floppy disk. So the bus that's inside of the NABU, um, and this one, this is the, the regular NABU everyone's talking about right now. There's, I'll show you some videos of some other NABU computers as well. Um, but the bus allowed you to be able to hook up a floppy disk uh, controller to it. And I believe it was Western Digital. I have some videos I have to find too of uh, some of the controller boards. And I'm kind of kicking myself now because when, when my father passed, I went through everything and, and took a lot of his stuff that was NABU related, but there's a ton of stuff I didn't take because, you know, you're just going through a hard time there, like with death and, and mourning and everything. So let me show you a few things. So this is an interesting video here. Again, this is no effort, right? So <laughs> we're not going to be uh, 
video edit any of this. This is just a uh, spur of the moment because I was in, uh, intrigued from watching Adrian's video. Uh, so this is something that was really neat about my family is that because, you know, they were first started off in Nabu, then they ended up in Apple Canada. We were Apple Canada in Ottawa after Nabu went bankrupt. And then following that, my father started a video game company. And so they were really big into like building their own electronics and power supplies. And this is a power supply. And you might actually notice this. This is actually a Nabu um, chassis. And all around the house, we always had all our project boxes were Nabu chassis, which was really neat because we had an excess of them, right? And <laughs> my dad used to build Apple II clones all the time. And he used to use, he used to use the, uh, the Nabu chassis. And I wish I had mine, but it was thrown out years and years ago. But my first Apple computer was a clone and it was inside of a Nabu uh, uh, chassis. It was really neat. So that's kind of cool. Um, here's some stuff. Now I, don't, I can't show you this stuff in person because it's actually not where I am. I spend six, six months of my year somewhere else. So this is not where I am right now. So these are videos I just had to find on my iPhone archive. But um, some Nabu toque, right? Because we're Canadian, the toque and the Nabu hat. And this isn't a Nabu, this is a, a 1100, I believe. And um, that's pretty rare, way more rare than the, the computers we're dealing with now here since there's so many of them found. But got a few of those as well. This is uh, an advertisement for um, their display. So this is one of those pop-up ones. On the back, it has a little piece of cardboard that would allow it to stand up. So you can pause there, I don't know if I can I should put this all in GitHub or do something with all this stuff. I have so much Nabu stuff, like boxes and boxes, everything from um, expense uh, reports and and you'll see here in a second, every single newspaper clipping of Nabu ever being published. Okay, now these were x86 based machines that ran Xenix. So it's different than the Z80 that we're talking about and they use an S100 bus. Okay, so here we go. This is 1984. I don't know what direction I go on this, but like, like <laughs> this is at the end of, of Nabu, right? There's the blank pages because poof, Nabu disappeared after that. Um, yeah, John Kelly was the CEO. Um, my, my uncle, uh, John Boback, was the uh, C CFO. And uh, my uncle Howard, he was... Um, Chief, the, the uh, marketing manager, I guess you'd call him. I can't remember their job descriptions back then in the day. My father was uh, one of the engineers that designed the whole thing. Worked with a few other people that you can see fine on the internet that uh, have some references in Nabu. So these are all pretty neat stuff here. Look at that advertisement. Oh, there's a there's a price there. Let's go back. I know that. Adrian had mentioned about how much things cost. Let's let's go back here. Let's find out where that was. I know this is like so low budget video. This is the most low budget YouTube video you're ever gonna see on YouTube. All right, <laughs> this is like lower budget than technology connections. This is no effort November. There we go. 60 day trial offer, 49.95 rental plan. So complete rental hardware is 19 bucks a month. Your subscription to the family of software was nine dollars a month. $10 a month, I guess. And then you had a uh, optional subscription to Nabu logo software. Yeah, there was something else too about, about this. I'm trying to recall now. It was something to do with a turtle. There was, I think it was there, there, they were trying to get into the school system or into libraries and they had some sort of thing called the turtle club. And yeah, yeah, okay. My brain is gonna have to go through this stuff one day and we'll organize it better. But look at this regular value of $79 and so get it. 60 day offer. This is neat. Think about this, right? This would have been like, well, what did it say on the front of this? 1983 or something? 1982. So, oh, John Kelly. I remember, I remember him very well. He was a very eccentric man. Um, yeah, it's so neat. It's so neat because so many years in my life have I talked about Nabu and talked about um, how it was like the internet before its time when I was a kid. And, and you know, it really helped the transition from my family's business from Nabu into uh, into Apple. But um, I learned a lot through this this stage. Being you know, being so young at the time when this was all happening, it was 1984. It's 
it's pretty wild. It was really neat to be exposed to this, to, to have a family that was developing a computer system. You know, we're going to 83 now. <laughs> okay, so that, yeah, this is, this is awesome. This is super awesome. I remember they had their original computers. Oh yeah, my dad had a, um, an AMC Rebel, which my brother has now. And he had a lot of pictures of AMC Rebels and Monk stuff, so must have slipped into this thing. Oh, what's that? Something about fighting off a union. Hold on here. Let's go back. That was kind of neat. Here we go. New group at Nabu fighting Union Crusade. So what's interesting, and I think a lot of people don't realize why they Nabu became such a big deal for such a short period of time, is... Um, it was funded, and it was mentioned in Adrian's video about being funded by Canada. It was because Canada has a system called SHRED, S-R-E-D, which is scientific research and um, engineering development. And the idea is that the government will actually subsidize, or not subsidize, it'll give you money back. So it's post-investment, which means that you've already spent money on the, on the research and development. And the things you've learned, you get to be able to recoup some of those costs. So Nabu was like the first company that this whole process went through. Well, that's neat. Look at that, an Apple II. So it's an instructor from Nabu showed somebody how to operate an Apple II computer. <laughs> that's kind of kind of interesting. It's like somebody from Microsoft showing people how to use uh, an Apple Macintosh. So here we go. Now we're starting to see laid off Nabu workers. Yeah. High tech, not a magic solution, unemployment woes. So the reference to not a magic solution, you'll see that a lot in a lot of their marketing is because they had this um, magician. <laughs> I don't know the guy's name, but he was like all of, all of the uh, advertisements and stuff. So it was always kind of neat. Oh, look at this big fold down. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, this is going to be a good one. There's the magician. Speak of the devil. Look at that. 49 bucks. Cool, cool, cool. Isn't that wild? Let's see, I think we have one more video on here to go through, or is that it? Oh, some more stuff from my dad here. It's from a trade show, I guess. And I had, I don't know if I have any more pictures. Oh, that's neat, this is really cool. This is a, uh, a luggage tag. So when you go traveling and stuff, it's pretty wild. And some, a bunch of Nabu buttons. I have tons of those, I got a lot more. Anything else? Uh, that might be it for, for the videos on here. It seems like it, yeah. It seems like that's all there is. So, I don't know. If you have any questions, you can ask in some of the YouTube comments of my videos. But hopefully, I'll get a little bit of assistance. I know that um, this is uh, pretty exciting, I think, for a lot of people to be able to do something with it. My goal on this thing is just to have a allow people to hook up an RS-422 uh, adapter with a five pin DIN to their NABU, and then I'll put up a, a server and we'll just host files and allow people to develop stuff um, using whatever libraries we can come up with. I don't know if we'll be able to get any much of that from York University or not if they're willing to, but we'll see what happens. But it'll be really neat to allow people to, to develop things and then maybe we could have like a web interface where people can upload their files and then we can dynamically create a menu that will be loaded when the when the uh, NABU turns on and you'll be able to select your, your application, right? It won't be bi-directional, although I'm kind of thinking, <laughs> this is just me thinking out loud though, but um, because you can request things from the NABU adapter, I wonder if we can talk directly to the port and to the HCCA port and send our own request to the adapter and because our adapter will be a simulator we might be able to actually send information back up to it so we'll have to see because i don't think the 4k version uh supports bi-directional over the uh over the adapter uh connection but anyway this is me thinking out loud hopefully this is uh, an interesting video to somebody because i know that it's been um part of my life for so long so many years ago and i remember sitting around having beers with friends telling stories about about Nabu, you know, the internet before its day. So props to my dad for participating and John Kelly and Howard and John and 
everyone else who, uh, my family who participated with NABU because I know that they're probably pretty excited to hear that it's getting a little bit of attention. Okay, take care.